Ever wondered about those mysterious metal contraptions called chastity belts from medieval times? We've all heard the stories, but today we'll explore the history and expose the top 10 lies surrounding these infamous devices. Make sure you're ready, because we're about to expose the truth. Number 10. Torture Devices Alright, let's debunk the first myth surrounding chastity belts. The belief that they were medieval torture devices wielded by knights to ensure their wives' fidelity. The popular notion ties these belts to the Crusaders gearing up for Holy Land expeditions. However, let's dig into the historical dirt and unearth the truth. Contrary to common belief, there's no solid evidence supporting the idea that knights strapped their wives into these metal contraptions. Sure, the term chastity belt pops up in literature, but that doesn't automatically translate to real-life usage. It could just be poetic language symbolizing a wife's commitment to her husband during his absence. Now, where chastity belts do make frequent appearances is in exhibitions dedicated to torture practices. Picture belts adorned with menacing spikes, seemingly designed to inflict pain. But hold on, the reality is far from the horror show it appears to be. Most of these ominous pieces were actually crafted in the 19th and 20th centuries, long after the Middle Ages. Let's explore the grim side. Wives forced to wear these belts while their husbands embarked on extended journeys particularly prevalent among knights and crusaders. These metal undergarments serve the purpose of preventing sexual intercourse in the husband's absence. The dark twist? They often turned into instruments of humiliation, as women were coerced into wearing them against their will. In some instances, women chose to wear chastity belts voluntarily, not as a sign of fidelity, but as a shield against potential rape. This practice was more common during the Middle Ages, where husbands might be away at war for extended periods, sometimes up to three years. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about the real deal, medieval torture devices. These instruments weren't about preserving marital fidelity, but inflicting pain, injury, or death on individuals accused of crimes, heresy, witchcraft, or other offenses. Picture the brazen bull, a gruesome creation, a hollow brass bull with a door on the side. Victims were locked inside and a fire was lit beneath them. The heat would lead to suffocation and burning, with their screams mirroring the bellowing of a bull. Enter the thumb screws, metal devices armed with screws that could be mercilessly tightened. Their purpose? To crush the fingers or toes or limbs of the victim, extracting confessions, information, or obedience in the most agonizing manner. As we debunk the myth of chastity belts as torture devices, it's essential to distinguish between romanticized tales and the harsh reality of medieval practices. Chastity belts may have found their way into the narrative, but their true purpose differed significantly from the brutal instruments designed to inflict pain on the accused. Number 9. Medieval Use Contrary to popular belief, there's a surprising lack of references to chastity belts in serious medieval texts. The few instances where the idea is mentioned often lean heavily on metaphorical interpretations. Take, for instance, a Latin text advising women to hold the helmet of salvation on your front, the word of truth in the mouth, and the girdle of chastity in the body. Sounds more like a poetic metaphor than a hardware recommendation, doesn't it? One text often thrown into the ring as proof of medieval chastity belt use is Bellefortis, a 1,405 book boasting designs for both chastity belts and wartime torture devices. However, don't take everything in the book at face value. It also features designs for devices promising invisibility, which, let's be real, is more Harry Potter than medieval reality. Delving into the imagery, most depictions of chastity belt wearers are surprisingly satirical. Picture this, a drawing from 1590 where a woman's lovers are waiting for her husband to leave, armed with copies of the key to her supposed chastity belt. It's a story that has been passed down for centuries, painting a simple, shocking, and somewhat entertaining picture of the past. One where we, in the present, feel enlightened and superior. But here's the kicker. It's likely very wrong. Enter Albrecht Klassen, a medievalist on a mission. Fueled by a desire to set the record straight, he embarked on a comprehensive exploration of everything ever written about chastity belts. His goal? To debunk the myth once and for all. Leslie Smith, a historian from the late 16th century, echoed Klassen's sentiments. In a 2007 article for the British Medical Journal, she expressed her travels and examinations of art collections, revealing a stark reality. 
no chastity belt could be conclusively proven to be of medieval origin. But why did the myth persist? Blame it on the medieval mindset. In that era, any sexual activity not resulting in conception was considered taboo. The inclination to believe in the chastity belt myth stems from a portrayal of medieval Europe as a place where even the most intimate matters were strictly controlled. Number 8. Long-Term Wear Contrary to the popular belief that chastity belts were exclusively instruments of control, some individuals opt to wear them voluntarily. The reasons behind this choice vary, ranging from a desire to maintain celibacy to deeply rooted religious or personal beliefs about the sanctity of marriage. Imagine it as a conscious decision to detach oneself from the complexities of sexual pursuits, fostering a sense of tranquility and focus on other aspects of life. In essence, it's a liberation from the concerns of sexuality, allowing the wearer to channel their time and mental energy elsewhere. Historical anecdotes hint at instances where chastity belts may have been donned for practical reasons. Take, for example, the Crusades, a tumultuous period when knights embarked on epic journeys. During these times, the belts could have served as a precautionary measure, aiming to protect women from potential sexual assault in the absence of their husbands. However, it's crucial to note that evidence supporting the widespread use of chastity belts in such scenarios is not particularly robust. In other intriguing instances, chastity belts might have taken on a role as tools of punishment or control. The extent and duration of wear in these situations remain shrouded in mystery. How long were these contraptions worn and to what effect? The historical record leaves us with more questions than answers. Number 7. Punishment for Adultery Chastity belts, devices that were reportedly worn by women in the Middle Ages to prevent sexual intercourse, are often referenced in popular culture as an extreme method of enforcing fidelity. But these belts are curiously missing from most legitimate medieval texts, which initially puzzled historians. So what are chastity belts, and did women really wear them? According to curators of the Semmelweis Museum in Budapest, which displayed an exhibition on the history of the chastity belt in 2010, the belts were thought to be introduced as an answer to unchecked female promiscuity when knights left for battles, pilgrimages, or religious crusades. If medieval chastity belts didn't exist, then why do we see evidence of them made in real metal and often displayed in museums? The truth is that most of the chastity belts we've seen probably weren't fashioned until the late 1700s or the 1800s, likely created based on a misunderstanding of the idea that these were ever effective or serious options for husbands worried about their wives' fidelity. The chastity belt, as the name suggests, was not designed to protect women from abuse or infidelity. Instead, they were meant as a prevention of masturbation. This is backed up by a number of patented belts against masturbation from the USA. In times of industrial revolution, it is also highly likely that women used belts as a protection against rape, because working in a factory often involves sexual assaults on female workers. In the modern day, infidelity usually ends up with a divorce, but occasionally it doesn't. Sometimes the victim of infidelity will find it in their heart to forgive their cheating partner with one condition, they have to be punished. And sometimes wearing a chastity belt is part of that punishment. In this case, the psychological impact of wearing a chastity belt can be extremely potent. The wearer cannot run from the reminder of their betrayal, as it encases the anatomy of their infidelity. It cannot be taken off unless with a key, usually held by the cheater's spouse. The shame must be unbearable, especially because you can never ignore a steel cage around your privates. Every time you move, you feel its weight shift with yours, constantly guilt-tripping you for the things that you've done. And number 6 inescapable devices. The earliest whispers of chastity belts date back to ancient Rome, where they took the form of symbolic knots rather than the metallic contraptions we envision today. Brides adorned in white tunics featured a Herculean knot, often referred to as a love knot, symbolizing undying love, signaled their commitment to chastity. The groom's role? Untying the knot on their wedding night, marking the inception of the phrase, tying the knot. Sarah E. Bond, an assistant professor of classics at the University of Iowa, sheds a light on this ancient practice. The concept of chastity, deeply rooted in European culture, remained abstract until the 15th century when it manifested physically. Enter Conrad Kaiser, a German military engineer, and his groundbreaking work, Bella Fortis, a compendium of military engineering featuring catapults, armor, torture devices, and, notably, 
the chastity belt. However, Kaiser's approach to the chastity belt is laced with humor and a lack of seriousness. Amidst his illustrations, he inserts a playful note, padlocks unto the four-legged creatures, breaches unto the women of Florence. A joke binds this lovely series together. I recommend them to the noble and obedient youth. It becomes evident that, at least in Kaiser's mind, the idea of physically restraining women's sexuality was more jest than earnest consideration. Despite the playful nature of these early depictions, the concept of chastity belts intrigued medieval Europeans. Drawings continued to surface throughout the 16th century, emphasizing the novelty of the belts. In one whimsical engraving, a woman hands her husband the key to her belt with a demure gesture as he prepares to depart. However, a humorous twist awaits as two men lurk behind the bed, armed with a duplicate key. Number 5. Fashion Statement The essence of a chastity belt is deceptively simple, an accessory designed to protect a woman's chastity. In medieval depictions, it takes the form of a metal contraption with a prominent lock at the front. The symbolism is clear. Women wearing the belt were denied sexual autonomy without their husband's explicit permission and possession of the key. However, the devil is in the details, or rather the design. Chastity belts weren't a one-size-fits-all affair. Some featured menacing spikes, strategically placed to dissuade potential suitors, while others opted for a more comfortable approach, substituting metal with leather straps. An unconventional entry into the design catalog comes from a chastity belt showcased at the Science Museum in London, boasting a pretty yet improbable flower pattern, supposedly allowing for defecation, an unexpected twist in functionality. Museum exhibits around the world contribute to the mystique of these belts. For instance, the Musée de Cluny in Paris boasts a belt allegedly belonging to Catherine de Medici. It sports a simple velvet hoop with a small iron plate at the front. Another artifact, linked to Anne of Austria, features hinged plates attached by a metal waistband. The allure of these displays, however, is tainted by a historical revelation. Despite their seemingly authentic appearance, these so-called medieval artifacts are, in fact, more modern than we'd like to believe. Scientific testing, such as the analysis of Catherine de' Medici's belt, has debunked their medieval origins. The metal in her belt dates back to the early 19th century, centuries after her death in 1589. This prompts a startling realization. The iconic chastity belt, as we envisioned it, likely emerged as a product of the 19th century Gothic revival. The 19th century witnessed the widespread availability of materials like iron and steel, primarily used for monumental projects such as railroads and bridges. Yet some skilled artisans took a more risque route, giving rise to the chastity belt as a peculiar offshoot of industrialization. According to Albrecht Claussen, a keen observer of medieval history, a particular sector of English manufacturers identified a lucrative market for chastity belts on the continent and beyond. This market wasn't for practical use, but for the Victorian fascination with dark age torture devices. The demand for salacious glimpses into medieval barbarism prompted the creation of meticulously crafted, albeit fake, chastity belts. These forged artifacts found their way into museums and curiosity shows, captivating the tight-laced Victorian audience. The allure of these devices, both real and imagined, fits seamlessly into the narrative of a morally superior present looking back at a supposedly backward past. The chastity belt, born out of this demand, became an extravagant showpiece designed to titillate and shock. While many museums have since removed the counterfeit belt from their exhibits, some relics linger in places like the British Museum in London. However, these artifacts are now accompanied by disclaimers. For instance, the British Museum's display acknowledges the existence of chastity belts from the 15th century onward, but notes the scarcity of concrete evidence for their use during the Renaissance period. The display emphasizes the anecdotal nature of the evidence and its frequent occurrence in burlesque fiction. The notion of chastity belts as a fashion statement is undeniably unusual and contentious. In history, these devices were intended to control and restrict sexual activity, primarily among women. Their historical application is a subject of debate, with some scholars leaning towards myth or symbolism rather than widespread use. In the contemporary context, the idea of adopting a chastity belt as a fashion statement is bound to stir controversy. 
Given the historical association with the control and restriction of women's sexuality, such a choice could be perceived as provocative or offensive. Fashion, as a mode of self-expression, often pushes boundaries, but it's crucial to be mindful of historical symbols that might carry unintended and sensitive connotations. Number 4. Locksmiths and Escapes While there is indeed some evidence of devices resembling chastity belts from medieval Europe, the actual usage remains a hot topic of debate among historians. The prevalent image of gallant knights locking up their wives and daughters in chastity belts before embarking on heroic quests is likely more the stuff of literature and romanticized fantasies than a historical reality. Consider this, chastity belts, in practice, were not only impractical, but downright hazardous to the wearer's health and hygiene. Wearing them for extended periods could lead to wounds, infections, sepsis, and even death. Imagine the discomfort and danger associated with such a contraption. It becomes evident why historians question their use as a practical means of enforcing fidelity or preventing rape. Here's the kinker. These supposedly secure devices weren't as foolproof as one might think. Enter the locksmith, the unsung hero of forbidden love stories. Chastity belts could be easily picked open by a skilled locksmith or, if the romantic tales are to be beloved, bribed by a determined lover. The very idea that these belts could be outsmarted raises doubts about their effectiveness. Now, let's delve into a major innovation in locksmithing during the early Middle Ages, the widespread use of metal. Simple iron bolt locks gained popularity in England and subsequently spread across Europe and Asia throughout the medieval period. An early example of a spring lock, dating back to 850, was unearthed in a Viking settlement near York, England, showcasing the evolution of security mechanisms. Turning our gaze to medieval art, paintings, and illuminated manuscripts offers glimpses into the world of locks and keys owned by the nobles. The famous Bayou Tapestry immortalizes a moment where a duke hands the keys of his town over to William the Conqueror, providing a visual testament to the importance of these symbols of authority. Written records from the 1300s further document the purchase and use of locks and keys during this period. Number 3. Prevention In certain cultures, women found themselves encased in metal contraptions, uncomfortable and restricting, all in the name of preventing sexual activity and pleasure. But the story doesn't end there. As we delve deeper into history, we encounter a peculiar twist, the use of chastity belts to prevent masturbation. Picture this, at the time when the Boharv's chastity belt was crafted, these devices weren't primarily designed to ward off adulterous affairs or protect against rape. No, the spotlight was on preventing the perceived scourge of masturbation, especially among the younger population. The prevailing belief was that achieving orgasm without attempting procreation was a wasteful dissipation of vital energy, a notion that drove the creation of such peculiar solutions. Enter John Harvey Kellogg, the mastermind behind sugarless cornflakes. Yes, you heard it right. Kellogg believed that a diet without stimulating ingredients would curb youthful desires. Parents, ever resourceful, sought various methods to shield their children from the perils of self-gratification. The chastity belt in this context seemed like a fitting apparatus. Equipped with a lock, it could only be opened by parents, ensuring control over their children's perceived wayward impulses. For girls, a small opening allowed for basic bodily functions but was strategically designed to prevent any form of self-touching. Boys faced a more discomforting solution, a hole equipped with metal teeth ensuring pain if an unwanted erection occurred. The chastity belt in the context of the Borhav Museum becomes a symbolic artifact representing not just sexual health, but also a narrative of fear-mongering and control. As we scrutinize the prevailing interpretations of these devices, a startling revelation emerges. The peak of chastity belt usage wasn't during the Middle Ages, where they were barely invented, but rather during the modern era. The objective shifted from thwarting adultery and rape to preventing masturbation, notably among the youth. In the mid-20th century, anthropologist Eric John Dingwall claimed the existence of chastity belts since the 12th century, but evidence remains scant. The likelier scenario is that the idea gained traction in the early modern period, serving as a conceptualization of a perceived backward era before the enlightened times of the proponents. 
far from the so-called Dark Ages. The chastity belt found its popularity in the 18th and 19th centuries. Number 2. Religious Mandate Let's step back in time and explore the intriguing connection between chastity belts and religious mandates. The popular belief that these devices were employed during medieval times as a religious decree has persisted through generations. But as we delve into the historical tapestry, it's time to separate fact from fiction. Many have speculated from their purient interest in the narrative, highlighting humanity's perpetual fascination with the unusual and carnal aspects of others' lives. It seems we're drawn to tales that depict the strange appetites and behaviors of those who came before us. Moreover, there's a tendency to view periods like the Middle Ages through a lens of condescension, portraying the people of that era as backward and foolish. This perspective allows us to feel a sense of superiority, perpetuating the long-held belief in the use of chastity belts, despite the glaring health and hygiene issues such devices would undoubtedly cause. Central to Greek, Roman, and Christian traditions, chastity embodies values of purity, blamelessness, and order. Often misunderstood as synonymous with asceticism or sexual abstinence, the relationship between chastity and renunciation is nuanced, marked by tension and, in some cases, opposition. In its original context in the ancient Mediterranean, chastity carried connotations of fertility and reproduction, a theme that persisted in Christianity, albeit with complex developments. Contrary to common misconception, historical evidence does not align with the idea that chastity belts were widely endorsed or mandated by religious authorities, particularly in medieval Europe. These enigmatic devices are believed to have originated in the 15th century, with their use more likely tied to concerns about fidelity and the desire to control women's behavior. While some sources hint at the possibility that certain individuals may have used chastity belts for personal reasons, a solid foundation of evidence supporting the official endorsement or mandate of their use by religious institutions remains elusive. Number 1. Chastity belts are real. You've heard the stories, seen the movies, but let's get down to brass tacks. Are chastity belts as real as they are made out to be? When one considers the evidence for medieval chastity belts, as Clausen did in his book, The Medieval Chastity Belt, A Myth-Making Process, it becomes apparent pretty quickly that there's not much of it. First of all, there aren't actually all that many pictures or accounts of the use of chastity belts and even fewer physical specimens. And the few book-length works on the topic rely heavily on each other and all cite the same few examples. You have a bunch of literary representation, but very few historical references to a man trying to put a chastity belt on his wife, says Clausen. And any literary reference to a chastity belt is likely either allegorical or satirical. References to chastity belts in European texts go back centuries, well into the first millennium AD. But until the 1100s, those references are all couched in theology as metaphors for the idea of fidelity and purity. For example, one Latin source admonishes the honest virgin to hold the helmet of salvation on your front, the word of truth in the mouth, true love of God and your neighbor in the chest, the girdle of chastity in the body. Possibly virgins who took this advice went around wearing metal helmets and keeping some physical manifestation of the word truth in their cheeks, like a wad of tobacco, in addition to strapping on metal underwear. Or possibly none of this was meant to be taken literally. The earliest extant drawing of a chastity belt showed up in 1405 in a work on military engineering called Bella Fortis, among detailed designs for catapults, armor, torture devices, and other instruments of war. But not everything in the book was serious. Included in the codex are the Clausen calls highly fanciful objects for making people invisible. The author, Conrad Kaiser, also makes a couple of fart jokes. Though the chastity belt is depicted in a fair bit of detail, no one has ever found a physical example dating back to this period. Most likely, this image, too, is a joke. Starting around the 16th century, the chastity belt started showing up more regularly in illustrations, engravings, and woodcuts. Typically, a scene looked something like this. A husband, often an older husband, was leaving on a journey. His wife was pictured, often partially naked, wearing metal underwear. But somewhere in the picture, her lover was already waiting for the husband to leave with a copy of the belt's key in hand. What accounts for the persistence of this story? Male fear, according to Clausen, 
there's always a lover in the background who already has the duplicate key, he says. In other words, even in the 1500s, no one took the idea of locked up metal underwear very seriously as an effective anti-sex device. When chastity belts were depicted, it was in the Renaissance equivalent of Robin Hood men in tights. And audiences for those pieces of art probably thought the idea of a metal chastity belt just as giggle-worthy as late 20th century teenagers did. There are physical examples of chastity belts that have been displayed in museums, but most scholars now think that these metal objects were made much, much more recently than the Middle Ages and are fantasy objects referencing a past that never really existed. Or, as the British Museum puts it, it is probable that the great majority of examples now existing were made in the 18th and 19th centuries as curiosities for the prurient or as jokes for the tasteless. These were the Victorians, after all, obsessed with sex and often very wrong about it. Recognition of the real history of chastity belts is slow in permeating cinematic and pop culture, but museums are beginning to take notice. A chastity belt from Musée de Cluny's collection was once thought to belong to Catherine de' Medici until a metal test of the metal in the 90s showed it was from the earliest 19th century. In 1996, the British Museum even removed a medieval chastity belt from a display set up in the mid-19th century. Many early modern chastity belts were actually jokes or crude representations of ideas of the medieval world, rather than actual artifacts from the time period. What is interesting about Mad Max is to recognize that they were meant to signify the Dark Age and the lack of sexual liberty for the wives. The breaking of these locks in the desert and the freeing of these women then visually communicates their autonomy, a movement towards empowerment, and the emergence of a modern era to come. That's all for now, folks. The truth about chastity belts that history often kept hidden. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more fascinating content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.